Hello, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VI, the Cell 58, and last we saw we beat Kefka and stopped the Empire to getting to this Esper, and now we're gonna have Terra talk to it, since she's a magic user and slightly different than anyone, and hopefully we can get this Esper to fight with us, That'd be a very, very powerful ally. No. Uh oh. WTF is going on, mate. I don't think this is good. No, it can't be good, right? Cause everyone's about to fall off a cliff. Seven better be careful. He might fall into some more water. What? What am I feeling? Huh? What? What's going on? Please tell me, who am I? Oh God, who? <laughs> Tara! An Esper can actually feel its mind. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> Step away from the Esper. Uh oh, not this again. What's gonna happen? And she turned into a pink fuzzy thing. A naked pink fuzzy thing? Oh god, that scream. First time I heard it was so late at night, it scared the crap out of me. Didn't expect that. And... Looks like she's flying off. She's been able to fly this whole time. She could have just picked us up, could have picked Savin up, saved him that. All that trouble. Could have just flown into South Figaro, picked up Locke, and was all like, what's up? But no, she has to save it for herself after we've gone through the Veldt, after we've gone through Doma, after we had to fight Tunnel Armor. Ah, uh, what a jerk. So she flew off, and now Locke's finally woken up after his three day stent, or however long it was. And she looked like an Esper. Oh my god. So maybe Terra's an Esper? In human form? Maybe that's why they need to put a slave crown on her? Mm hmm. Alright. Screaming across the sky to the west. So that's the major clue. You promised her you'd what? We all need to hear. So, the Empire still wants the Esper. So, what I was saying at the on my first Let's Play, you know, they, they only send three soldiers in Maytek armor to get the Esper. And then, later... They send that whole convoy of espers and Kefka, or espers of, of soldiers and Kefka, and I don't know, it just it, it just seems like one was too little and one was too much. Alright, now, when selecting this party, you can just select three members, because we'll be running into a certain assassin, but... For the purpose of this let's play, I, I might be grinding a bit, and he will leave. He, he has the random possibility of leaving you. And he's, he is a good choice because he's going to have some new throwable items. But I decided not to. So, I mean, that, that's really up to you. I, I recommend doing it. Uh, aside from this let's play, I would recommend doing it. And I'm bringing Sabin and Edgar uh, because there's a little scene uh, with them if you go to Figaro Castle. And I'm taking Locke just because I kind of feel like Locke's, you know, the main character. I mean, I guess Terra's the main character, but uh, Locke seems like the main male character. I'm just going to stock up on some items here. You don't need to, you know 
copy me on on this, but uh, I just like I just like being a little over prepared sometimes. When I when I have plenty of money, I like to buy 99 of things. So I don't know. It makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> All right, and I believe there's nothing new here. Let's take a look. Oh, I never bought a jewel ring. Might as well. I'm also the type that says oh, I might as well just have one of everything. Except that Titana bar. I don't really think I want to work on getting it. I don't. I just think it's a waste of time. Alright, and this weapon shop. My favorite weapon shop in the game. Uh, but that's that's for much later in the game. Alright, now the full moon. Uh, I think I'd buy two here. Just buy one. Because uh, from where where you were staying in Narsh, if you go directly south, there's a couple of great chests in there. One is a, I believe it's a thief knife, thief blade, something like that. Anyways, give that to Locke, and then there's also a relic that uh, increases his chance of stealing. Equip that onto him. Um, I keep the Genji Glove, do whatever you want with him, really, but I, I would recommend keeping the Genji Glove, because he's going to, with that Thief Knife, he has a chance of stealing pretty often, I don't know if it's every time, but uh, that, when paired with a higher chance of stealing, means he, he'll probably get something every time he, he goes in for the stealing, and it's not costing you a, uh, a time to... Uh, steel, so it's it's really it's really nice at this point in the game. But I mean, a lot of the enemies you fight only you know you can only steal like potions or tonics. So, eh, whatever. It's nice to have saves you some money, especially since right now I don't have a dedicated healer, which I might recommend you bring you bring a uh, Celis. Especially since you're gonna fight a boss who uses a lot of fire attacks. And here, oh, here's what I was talking about with um, Edgar and Sabin. Sabin runs off because he hasn't been to Figaro Castle in like 10 years or however long. So he's gonna reminisce, and you're gonna find out a little bit more about uh, about what happened 10 years ago. So if it or no, yeah. You know, obviously Sabin seems a little more emotional about uh, the whole situation. Maybe because, you know, he was younger. It was a little more traumatic. But, I mean, they're, they're twins. Uh, I, I keep having to remind myself that because they just... I feel I feel the story portrays Sabin as, you know, he's like four years younger or something like that when they're like the same age. Just that uh, Edgar's more mature. Well, I don't... <laughs> mature in one sense. I mean, he is... He is a little childish at times, but yeah, he's just a typical dude. So, you see, uh, their father just died, and Savin can't really cope with this. And you find out that that both Edgar and Savin really didn't want to run Figaro Castle. Neither one of them really wanted to. Uh, in that responsibility. They they both wanted to go do their own things. But, uh, obviously one stayed and one left. But Savin's just a ball of emo rage. Oh, Lord. Yep, see, he's running off. He's running off. Hmm. Freedom. What would Dad say? Well, he's dead! Oof, oof. That's messed up on me, wasn't it? I shouldn't have said that. Oh, well. I did it. What you gonna do? <laughs> this is for dad. So it's decided on a coin toss. Hmm. 
So then Sabin won. <laughs> Wolf and lobster and a king crab. Alright folks, I'm, I'm gonna have to end it after this scene because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm running out of time. So, next episode we are going to learn a little more about Locke. Um, oh, also, when you're in this castle, uh, be sure to pick up, there's two new tools, a drill and um, it's, a, it's like a camera. But, uh, get those. Uh, we'll talk more about that next episode. But next episode we'll learn more about Locke's past and um, hopefully find Terra. Alright, this is L58 saying thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and have a nice day.